Yesterday saw us head to the north peak of Changbaishan and the surrounding areas. Day two in the Changbaishan region, and today、um, is going to be a little bit hotter than the rest, or a little bit colder、um, than the rest of the days.、Um, yesterday it got up to like over the twenties,、um, and today it's like minus three outside、um, in the night, and it's about five degrees now. So getting. All of the warm stuff that I brought that I thought I'd need yesterday, I didn't need at all. But definitely will need today as I'm heading to a more remote region.、Um, I'm heading to the west, which not many people visit, and it includes a two-hour hike. So ah, getting nice and warm. I think it's about. I'm currently in the north region in Erdal Bayha, and then to get west, I have to drive for about an hour and a half that way. So. Yes. Anyway, wish me luck, and I hope it's not too cold. So I have just arrived at the area to get in at the West Gate, West Peak area to go to Tianshi. Now everyone is wearing a lot more clothes than yesterday,、um, and I obviously am as well. But I feel way underdressed today. Like I don't know if you can see, but everyone behind has got like on. Proper like ski boots and ski pants and stuff like that. Um, I do have like I'm wearing just a top and a thermal right now, but I do have um like a down jacket that I can put on underneath this if I need it. Um, but I feel a little bit scared because it's a lot colder than yesterday. It's also earlier in the day,、uh, so it might be colder. Um, and I have to walk a lot more, so we've got about a two-hour hike to get up to Chenshu. Um, Heavenly Lake. Hopefully, it'll be fine. I'm just in this waiting room right now, and、um, so、obviously, you have to go through a security check. Looks like any train station, airport, whatever in China, where it's just you have to go through the security behind me, and it bleeps every time, but no one actually cares and checks. And then you go through a ticket check with your passport. Bring your passport. Bring your ID, the same one that you bought your ticket with.、Um, And it's basically from here we get dropped off.、Um, we go on the tourist buses. So I got just got dropped off here、um, in in I think it's called Chishi. I'm not quite sure.、Um, and it's a very much livelier town than the one、uh, before. I have to say. But yeah, ready to get up to Tianshi and have an explore. A lot less touristy here. Excited for some nature and a bit more of a, a bit more of a hike, I guess. Let's see how it goes. It's good. It's good at the cold. There are much fewer tourists that visit here, which is certainly reflected in the size of the buses compared to yesterday's ones. This drive up is much quicker than the one on the north slope, and a lot prettier too, with much more of a softer incline, fewer winding roads, and a good view throughout the journey. So it was pretty windy, as you can tell, and here I'm basically just saying how windy it is, and that the hike starts here. Also, whoever said it was two hours was definitely lying, and it's not really a hike either. It's just a loads of stairs. I think it's snowing. Anyway, I never actually found out how long it does take because at the entrance, this worker underestimated me and suggested I get a snowmobile instead of trying to walk. Well, I was kind of offended, but also mainly excited at the prospect of a snowmobile, so I hurried on over. For some wild reason, this requires you to register at the police station. Upon reflection, I presume this actually might be to do with insurance purposes. So yes, you also need your passport. Once I paid, I then made my precarious way over to the snowmobiles, and honestly, I'd never ridden one of these before, so it was pretty exciting. And the wind had definitely started to pick up by now. 
Upon climbing aboard, it wasn't long before I realized I'd missed a very crucial item of clothing, gloves. My fingers started to freeze straight away. Also, if you've ever ridden a snowmobile before, you'll know that you need to hang on pretty tight, so sorry for the poor footage here, um, but this was great fun and almost worth the fingers freezing off. I feel like an absolute cheat for getting that machine <laughs> to take me up. But damn, it was fun. It's the first time I've ever been on a snowmobile. So, you know, kind of had to. It wasn't too expensive. <gasps> oh my god, how pretty! A big difference up this spot is the lack of people. I basically had this whole area to myself and over there is North Korea. Although in the end I couldn't stay too long for genuine fear of losing my fingers. It is a lot colder than it looks and I was certainly underprepared. When I say I didn't stay long, I really mean it. I stayed at the top of here for about five minutes and even then it was a real push to have to make myself to stay there. It was only a couple of minutes before the wind really started to pick up. I had to physically hold on very tight to not get blown into the lake and for my glamour to be blown in either. There was genuinely a few times I almost slipped on the snow beneath me. I've got to say, even though I had travelled and paid a lot to come here, I was so happy to get off that slope as quick as possible. The weather had gone from kind of cold to crazy cold and was getting even crazier when I was leaving. At high altitudes, the weather here is very changeable. I have never been so close to the point that I literally thought that I might lose my fingers. Like, I thought that I was going to lose my fingers to this trip. I, they are in such pain right now. I'm currently undergoing the They're tingling so badly because I'm in warm and I have a hot coffee. But at the same time, they're still cold. Like, they're still cold and also hurting from, like, tingling and stuff. So, <sighs> okay, I was... Unprepared. I should have brought gloves. Yes. Yeah. This snowmobile ride totally worth it. Thank God they have, of course, noodles and tea up here. I'll give you a look around. Very simple, but just what I needed. <laughs> hey, it's time to say goodbye to Chencha. <laughs> goodbye to my fingers, maybe. <laughs> what a gem. The wind started to pick up so unfortunately I decided it was time to get off the mountain. Actually I'd kind of booked onto a tour today through trip.com. Using trip is a must in China and we had a few other interesting stops on the way. In the west area they also have tourist buses but one big difference here is you'll probably be the only one in them and they're much smaller of course. My whole trip after this point I hardly saw one other tourist the entire few hours I spent here. Pretty crazy considering it's a big mountain range. Definitely a real lack of tourists here. Just me on this whole bus. And it literally just left because of me as well. I think the driver was a little pissed off. It's about an eight minute journey from here to the gorge canyon. I don't know what we're going to something anyway let's see so this is the entrance 11 degrees right now let's go
this time it really is just me on the trail that bus just took me um i was in my own bus to come down the mountain uh from tian shi and now i am also in the in my oh, and then i was also in the, my own bus to go from the like changing junction to this place that's very nice nice little trail all to myself and it makes me feel a little bit better for not um <laughs> doing the steps before now i do get a little bit of a hike let's see what this gorge canyon has to offer i think i am a little underdressed it is a little chilly I don't know if you can see it on camera, but all of that dust was being picked up from the wind. That's how strong the wind is right now. Thankfully, I'm in a little area that's covered from the wind, but look at that. Being pulled up by the wind. This apparently is, oh no, the wind again. One second. This apparently is the best viewing spot for the canyon, and I think they were correct. Ah, it's behind me, it's so beautiful. And like, I didn't come for this, it's not like why I'm here, but it's this beautiful, vast expanse of trees and rocks and river, and it's just beautiful, like, you can see down there, you can also see how windy it is. It's not actually that cold. Just beautiful. And I just love the fact, I mean, it's obviously really nicely done as well. Very like kind of tourist friendly. And I just love the fact that this is like a secondary little site to go to. This is what I love about China, just the nature. There's so much of this, you know, that's just like casual, just like here. Whereas actually it's, it's actually it's pretty damn fabulous if it weren't for all of the dust <laughs> all around me from uh, from the um, the wind right now but anyway let's see what else this place has to offer <sighs> oh, okay I guess 800 meters to the exit I'm already there Um, it's part of this tour that I booked online and um, before you go back there's like a couple of stops this is one of them and it's probably the most random place I've ever been in. it's this um, wooden village and there's a bit of an explanation online but it's just one of those really bizarre places that I think is probably sponsored <laughs> by like some kind of tour company or something or like it's one of those things that's like part of a tour but it's obviously not the main attraction and it's just so random like I don't know if people live here or it's just a tourist thing anyway there's no one here there are little shops for different things like tofu and so oh my god a dog who looks like he's had better days and uh yeah just looks like rural Chinese village life to be honest made into a bit of a uh, tourist attraction it's very random Sweetie. From donkeys back to the city, it was time for a walk around and a little bit of an explore before I had to leave. There is a pretty nice viewpoint here to check out the sunset and also a nice river. Here is where we were up today. Let's check. 
watching my son. The final part of this trip ended up being a pretty relaxing one. You cannot come to this region without enjoying the hot springs. So before my night train back to Beijing, this was the perfect option. I love Chinese spas. Ones like this are mixed so you have to wear swimwear. You can spend all day here basically just chilling out. Usually the prices cover a half day or a whole day. They have different rooms with different temperatures or different vibes. They have your own personal little areas or just chairs and tables to sit and relax on and have some noodles. As well as pools to swim in and an outdoor one which was just too much bliss since it started snowing too. It's times like that that I just don't catch on camera since I'm too busy in the moment. Sorry. I'm out of the spa, unfortunately, and just got to railway station, which you can see behind me, which I guess, unfortunately, concludes this journey for now. For me, the sounds of China, my gosh. For me, I still have about 15 hours of journey to go, but I'm not gonna put you guys through that. So I'll say bye for now. And thanks for joining. And Chiang Mai Shan is like a low tier city, right? Let me leave you with these parting notes. A low tier city, small population, quite touristy you know, during tourist season, but otherwise, a bit of a shithole. Look at this place. Amazing, perfect. Let me flip you around. Ridiculous. All right, you may have your opinions about China, but like, Anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Talk to you next time.